Access your free language gifts of the month right now. Here's what you're getting this month. First, the writing a journal cheat sheet. With this cheat sheet, you'll be able to keep a diary in your target language and talk about your day. Inside, you'll find phrases for common daily activities from morning to night. Second, if you love travel, then you'll love our brand new travel words and phrases PDF ebook. Learn all the must know travel phrases with this ebook. Download it for free right now. Third, must know words and phrases for your resume. If you want to write your resume in your target language, then this next one minute lesson is for you. Fourth, the top 12 April Fool's phrases. Want to prank others and speak more of your target language? Then you'll want this April Fool's phrase list. Fifth, the must know vocab for doing laundry. If you need language for practical situations like doing laundry, then this one minute lesson is for you. You'll learn how to say washing machine, detergent, softener, and much more. Sixth, free audiobooks. Unlock our huge library of language learning audiobooks. Save them to your device and listen and learn. They're yours to keep forever. And finally, the deal of the month. If you want to finally master the language with lessons by real teachers and our complete language learning program, get 31% off premium or premium plus with the You Can Speak sale. So to get your gifts and language learning resources, click the link in the description below. Download them right now before they expire. Suddenly you get bad abdominal pain and decide to buy some medicine. What are the instructions regarding the recommended dosage on the label? What are the instructions regarding the recommended dosage on the label? The label says that daily dosage, two pills per day after eating, الجرعة اليومية قرصان يوميا بعد الأكل Your condition is not getting better and you decide to go to the nearby clinic. You receive a medical report. What is the diagnosis? You receive a medical report. What is the diagnosis? The diagnosis is food poisoning caused by contaminated food. التسمم الغذائي الناتج عن الأغذية الملوثة Hey everyone! Welcome to the Monthly Review, the monthly show on language learning. 
where you discover new learning strategies, motivational tips, study tools, and resources. By the way, all the lessons and bonuses you're about to see can be downloaded for free on our website. So click the link in the description right now to sign up for your free lifetime account. Okay, today's topic is, are you improving? How to assess your language skills. Have you ever wondered, am I actually getting better with my target language? If you want to know how to check and see if you've improved or not, then keep watching. Today you'll learn why assessment can mean the difference between fluency and failure, how to assess your language skills, even if you're learning on your own, and much more. Are you improving? How to assess your language skills. So, have you ever wondered, am I actually improving with my target language? Feeling like you're not improving can hurt your motivation. On the flip side, if you notice yourself understanding more of the language than before, you can feel good, and that can fuel your motivation to keep going. But it's not easy to spot your improvement. It's tricky with language. It's not like going to the gym, where you can see your muscles in the mirror. This is where assessment comes in. What's assessment? The easiest example of assessment is a test. If you go to a language class, you'll get a test on the first day. The goal of the assessment test is to understand where your language level is. And any test after that is a way to see how much you've improved. This is ongoing assessment. So assessment is checking where you are now and how far you've come with your language learning. Assessment lets you see where you've improved and helps you find what you need to work on. If you're serious about learning a language, it's one of the best things you can do to stay on track, stay motivated, correct your mistakes, and reach fluency. But assessing yourself is also hard if you're learning on your own. So what can you do? Here's how you can assess your language skills, whether you're learning with our program or not. Number one, if you're a Premium Plus user, retake the assessment test. Technically, you can only take this once, but if you get in touch with our support team, we'll give you the link. If you're using any other resource, find a way to test yourself. Look for practice tests, apply for a proficiency test, take online quizzes, anything that forces you to test your language skills. Number two, revisit old lessons. An easier way to self-assess your language level is to revisit old lessons. You can do this with any program you're learning with. If you've truly made progress, then you should be able to understand the lesson dialogues with no problem. If not, then you know that you need to review them some more. Number three, try harder lessons. Also something you can do with any language resource. If you're using our program, try lessons from a higher level. If you're a lower intermediate, try upper intermediate lessons. If you don't understand anything, that's fine. But if you do, then that's a good sign that you've improved and are ready for harder lessons. Number four, for reading, check out our extensive reading books. These are available for all levels, from absolute beginner to advanced. You can reread old ones or try harder ones to see where your current level is. You'll find these books in our lesson library. This will help you assess your reading and comprehension skills. Number five, for speaking, use our voice recording tool. If you can easily repeat the lines from the conversation, that's a good sign. Or if you're using another program, try to shadow the provided conversations. If you can do it without a problem, then you've made progress and are ready to go to the next level. Number six, for writing, try and copy out our lesson dialogue by hand. The point here is to see if you can write smoothly or not as a way of assessing your writing. You can also do this with any textbook. You can also take a picture of your writing and send it to your Premium Plus teacher for feedback. Number seven, use our Premium Plus assignments. If you're a Premium Plus member, you can ask your teacher to send you weekly assignments based on your needs, whether for reading, writing, speaking, or listening. And they'll provide you feedback so you can see where you are with each skill. So to recap, one, take our assessment test, two, revisit old lessons, three, try harder lessons, four, use our extensive reading books for reading, five, use our voice recording tool, six, write out dialogues by hand, and seven, take advantage of our assignments. Remember, the point of assessment is not to pass or fail, but to see where you've improved and where you need to work. If you're trying to learn a new language, you'll sometimes have to contend with a whole new alphabet, complex grammar, and difficult pronunciation. Many new learners start out strong, but peter out after a short time. But that doesn't have to be your story. Don't let the harsh reputation of some languages scare you away. Yes, it's not easy, but it probably isn't as hard as you think either. 
In this video, we'll give you four ways to improve the way you study while learning a new language. Follow these and it will be hard not to see improvement in your language ability. Number one, develop a good accent. When first trying to learn a new language, the words might overwhelm you. Some words might be extremely long or complicated in ways you aren't used to. As a result, the new language can sometimes sound more like noise than an actual language. This could be because you don't yet have a good grasp of pronunciation in that language. So focus on this weak point by learning and practicing how to correctly pronounce each individual sound in the language. Start with ones most similar to your native language, and then move on to the more difficult ones. Then start practicing with full words, phrases, and sentences. Work your way up to listening to recorded audio of native speakers and try your best to mimic their flow of speech. While this method probably won't make your accent perfect, it will help you improve greatly. Even more importantly, you'll be able to hear the language differently and continue to improve. When you intuitively know how to correctly pronounce a sound, it's a lot easier to recognize that sound when it is spoken or read. Knowing these new sounds gives your brain some context for what it hears when you're using the language. Our language learning program is a great tool for working on your pronunciation. It lets you play back the words from a lesson in isolation. You can also play audio at a slower speed. This is perfect for pinpointing the nuances of the language and developing your own accent, as well as your ear. Number two, break down the writing system. Every language has its own unique set of rules and challenges when it comes to writing. Your best bet is to focus on one point at a time. Trying to learn the entire system at once can be overwhelming. Work with a section of the writing system until you become fairly comfortable with it. The point of going slowly and doing one piece at a time is to ensure that you have a firm foundation. If you rush through this stage, you might miss essential details, and this may negatively affect your learning in the future. Number three, learn grammar in context. This tip is applicable no matter what language you're learning. Once you move past the basic vocabulary in the language, try to pick up the patterns of the grammar by learning the rules in the context of phrases or sentences. Example sentences found in the lesson notes of each of our lessons are extremely helpful for this. After each lesson, you can look at the examples to get a feel for how a particular aspect of the grammar worked. Then, you can practice making your own similar phrases using the same rule. Slowly but surely, as you work through each episode, you'll take greater ownership of the language. This approach is a lot more effective than memorizing tables or rules. If you can use the grammar and vocabulary you just learned, you're much more likely to internalize it and thus remember it the next time you want to say something in your target language. Number four, get feedback from native speakers. Receiving correct and accurate feedback from native speakers is vital to improving your skills in the language. Whether you're reading or writing, you need to find out what your mistakes are so that you can correct them. Some people are willing and able to pay a private tutor or take a formal class in order to help them progress. These things will certainly help, but they aren't the only options. If you live near a major city, there's a chance that there are some native speakers in your area. Keep your eyes and ears open, because you might be surprised where you can find them. You can look for a nearby meetup group or a language exchange. You're likely to find speakers there as well. If these options don't work out, you can take your search online. There are several free language exchanges where you can chat via video or audio with other language learners. Look for a native speaker learning your own native language so that you can practice together and correct each other's mistakes. Don't be afraid to put yourself out there and make mistakes. It's all part of the process. As long as you're getting good feedback when you use the language, your skills will improve. Hopefully this video took some of the fear and mystery out of learning a new language. Remember that the most important tip is to enjoy the language for its own sake. If you enjoy the process of learning, then studying will seem more like a journey of discovery than work. Use these pointers as tools for the road ahead as you work your way to fluency in your target language. Some language learners progress more quickly than others. Is this because they're smarter, more talented, or maybe just lucky? This is not the case. Most of the time, a lot of what determines your success in a language is the amount and consistency of the time you put into it and the way that you go about practicing. In this video, we'll take a look at five techniques of successful language learners that you can use in your own studies. Number one, hit the easy targets. Start with easy, attainable goals in the beginning. You might want to do as much studying as possible when you first start learning a new language, 
but this is a good way to get burned out fast by all of the obstacles you'll hit. Whether you're trying to learn 10 basic vocabulary words a week, or just want to review some grammar that you've already studied and might need a refresher on, having easier goals to get you started on your language learning journey can make it easier to keep progressing. And then, when you hit those goals, you feel motivated to make even more challenging ones. It's okay to start small and work towards hitting the harder targets. But when you're just starting to learn a language, go for the easier ones rather than overwhelming yourself with too much at once. There's always been a bit of debate in the language learning world as to whether or not you should learn grammar explicitly or implicitly. A lack of grammar should never keep you from trying to speak a foreign language. However, implicit learning by itself doesn't work well when dealing with more complicated grammar. Number two, break down the most difficult parts of the grammar. Tenses, verb conjugations, noun inflection, there are a lot of tough spots you'll find in grammar. As you come across these foreign grammar concepts, take some time to study and practice them. Hone in on one aspect at a time and practice it by writing out sentences or simply by speaking. Read different grammatical explanations and example sentences. While you don't want to spend all your time grinding out grammar exercises, 10 or 15 minutes a day of focused practice will help you master these otherwise difficult areas of the language. Another great way to master grammar is to work with whole phrases or conversations. This isn't as easy to do while you're speaking with someone, but it can be done by listening to audio. Our language podcast lessons are ideal for this because they feature native conversations that you can pause or replay over and over again. As you study and work through a conversation, first look at the words and phrases that you do know. Then, without resorting to a translator or dictionary, do your best to figure out what any new or unfamiliar words mean. After that, feel free to look them up. If you work this way with whole sentences, you're much more likely to internalize the new grammar. Number three, practice with native speakers. Language course books, apps, and podcasts are all great ways to learn the language, but eventually the rubber will have to meet the road and you'll need to start using what you learn. The best students take every opportunity they can to practice the language with real people. You might not be learning the most popular language, but even so, there are still a lot of other learners out there trying to master it like you. Take advantage of this and try to link up with a meetup or language exchange in your town or city. This way, you can connect with other learners and get tips and tricks from them that might help in your own studies. If you're unable to find an exchange in your area, take the search online, and you can even find some native speakers on free sites that connect language learners around the world. Here, you can help out a native speaker who's learning your language. You can learn from each other. It's a win-win. Number four, focus on being understood, not being perfect. Undoubtedly, when you begin to speak with native speakers, you will make a lot of mistakes. This is a natural part of the language learning process. In your first few conversations, you'll probably mispronounce, misconjugate, or altogether forget words. But that's okay. Learn to embrace these mistakes. As long as you're practicing with a native speaker who can give you accurate feedback, those mistakes can do nothing but help you improve. After getting feedback on your mistakes, the next most important thing in your spoken language practice will be to keep the conversation going. If you make a mistake, correct it and move on. If you can't remember a word, do your best to describe it in your target language to your language partner. Use what words you have in order to be understood, even if your sentence or diction comes out a little weird. Number five, keep a journal in your target language. Most people talk about how important it is to speak a language you're learning, but not nearly as many mention how powerful writing in the language can be. Writing in your target language lets you use all the material you've learned, but without the demands of a real-time conversation. Writing is also an excellent way to expose the words or phrases you don't know or are unsure about. You can write in an old-fashioned paper journal and do your best to check it or have a friend look over it. You can also write entries online and have them corrected by native speakers. While it's not always easy to speak successfully, it is always rewarding. Use these tips as a guide to jumpstart your progress. No matter what, keep your head up and after a bit of patience and hard work, you'll be speaking your target language soon enough. For some, learning a new language seems to come naturally. For others, the entire process feels more like a tooth and nail struggle. However, if you've had a negative experience learning a new language at one point in time, don't let that discourage you from trying again. 
The truth is that learning any language is never easy, but it's definitely possible. Sometimes the difference between success and failure has less to do with your abilities or talents and a lot more to do with the way you look at things. In this video, we're going to look at how to avoid five serious mistakes made by new language learners. Number one, listen before you speak. Being slow to speak and quick to listen is good life advice, whether or not you're learning a foreign language. Effective listening is essential to communication. As a beginner, there is a tendency to concentrate so much on what you're going to say and how you're going to say it that you can completely miss the meaning or heart of what the other person is trying to communicate. Not only will this impair your ability to listen in your target language, it will also stall what little conversation you had going. Remember that conversations are a two-way street. If you're speaking more than listening, then you actually have more of a monologue on your hands than a dialogue. The inputs of language learning, listening and reading, are just as important as the outputs, speaking and writing. For a beginner, inputs are even more crucial, as they are the main way you acquire new vocabulary. We even go so far to say that for new students, the best method for learning involves more listening than it does speaking, though that may change with higher proficiency levels. Number two, don't be embarrassed when you do speak. People's next mistake usually comes from the other side of the spectrum, where new learners are too scared or embarrassed to contribute to a conversation. The fear of making mistakes and embarrassing yourself can paralyze your language learning. It's vital to remember that everyone makes mistakes. Even native speakers had to find their way through the language when they were children. Making mistakes while learning a new language is inevitable, but it's also a good thing. The faster you make mistakes, the quicker you can correct them and move on with your learning. So instead of being afraid to make mistakes, try looking at them as steps towards progress. In reality, that's what they really are. Number three, don't fixate on minor issues. If taken in all at once, a new language can feel overwhelming to learn. It's so easy to get discouraged by all your little mistakes and conversational mishaps and you lose sight of the progress you're making. In addition to mistakes, you'll also come across plateaus, where you study and practice consistently but don't see any results for a significant amount of time. But whether you face errors or plateaus, remember that these things are minor obstacles on the road to fluency. The most important thing is not to give up. Stick with it. If you stay persistent, your mistakes will be corrected and your abilities will improve. But if you slow down or throw in the towel completely, then you'll either subvert your progress or nix it altogether. So remember that as long as you're still studying and learning the language, you can't lose. It might feel like you're losing the battle for language learning for a little while, but hang in there. A practical way to help you stay motivated is to make small weekly goals. Research shows that goal setting has a significant impact on learning. Try picking one aspect of grammar or a collection of new words or phrases to study for the next seven days. At the end of the week, check your progress and measure your success. Setting little benchmarks like this will give you a rightful sense of accomplishment. Number four, remember that immersion isn't magical. A lot of people think that by moving to a foreign country, they will learn the language by osmosis. But whether you learn abroad or at home, you still need to study and practice the language. Living in a new country gives you way more opportunities to do this than staying at home. But if you don't consciously take advantage of these opportunities while living abroad, it won't benefit your language learning. If you're an expat living in a foreign country, there's a natural inclination to hang out around other expats. Learning a language and living in a foreign culture is hard and uncomfortable. For better or worse, we're often drawn to the easier road. If you made the decision to study abroad, then you wanna hang out with native speaking people as much as possible. You have the rest of your life to be with people who speak your language. This doesn't mean ignore your expat friends. Just be sure that you're giving proper attention to your language learning. Languages are better lived than they are learned. Number five, be open-minded. Languages are better lived than they are learned. When learning a new language, your brain will want to conform the new grammar and vocabulary to your native language norms and grammar rules. Ignore your brain on this one. At first, you might feel completely wrong saying a sentence that is in fact correct. After a certain point in language learning, there is a switch that goes off. When your brain finally realizes that you're not speaking your native language, but a new one altogether. This could take a while though, especially if this is your first time learning a new language. Until then, do what you know is correct, 
even if it feels a bit weird when you say it. The same goes for culture. Just as you want to be open to the differences in the language, don't forget to be open to the differences in the culture, too. Great work! Here's a reward. Speed up your language learning with our PDF lessons. Get all of our best PDF cheat sheets and ebooks for free. Just click the link in the description.